The last thing that I see in David, which was the foundation for the other four things, was his deep desire for God. If you look for, if you look in the other chapters, the chapter right before uh, verse seven, chapter seventeen, we see that when Samuel, he, he was told to go to this family of Jesse and to pick out a king, and he went through all the sons. They said that he had eight sons, so he went to the first one. And this guy was pretty buff, and he looked good. Hey, this guy should be our next king. But he, he said to Samuel, don't look on the outward terms, because that's where man lives, but God lives on the heart. And that's where God always lives. Because tests have been devised to, to see how smart people are, to get you into colleges, and tests have been devised to see how strong you are, but no test has ever been developed to measure a man's heart. And that's the only way that that can be measured is by God, and God says that. He says in his word that silver is made for a crucible, and gold is made for the fire. But the heart, that's the thing that God says. And nobody, I can't, you can't. We all can't measure what's inside of a man's heart. But when you have that heart that's fully out to God, which David had, when he died, he was a man that people would say he was a man out of God's heart. That's when God sees. God looks down to the heart. And he has potential. We all have potential of being David, of taking on those things that challenge us every day. Of saying, hey, I'm going to come in next week and I'm going to have the victory. I'm going to overcome anything that, that comes in my life. I'm going to blow those things away because the enemy has no hold on me because I know that my God is faithful. That's why we can dare to be different. That's why we can step <laughs> off in faith. That's why we have an assurance that, that we're not just there and just well, just take on the blows, but we have an assurance in our armor that we can go on ahead and chase down the enemy. And when we get that vision, the vision of a victory that we already want, and that inheritance that, that God has promised to us. And last of all, it starts by having a desire deep desire for God. And God will look on our hearts. And he's going to see big things, the potential that, that we could all be. Not, not only to be like Billy Grahams. Billy Grahams aren't the, the only people that could do it. It's not just J.O. Bryan. It's not just Tim Ortiz. It's not the, just Dr. Dobson. But it's you. It's me. The people that are going to be effective. I'm saying, hey, I can be a David. I can stand up. And I'll walk out and I'll take on anything that the enemy can come against me. Because I know it. But the strength and the victory and the battle is the Lord's. We can say that. But it's a call. It's a call that, that God has really called us to. That we might receive that vision of getting out there. That even right when we get out of this church, that, that when we say that we serve a mighty God, that they we did that. And make people see that we serve a mighty God in everything that we do. That when we get home, that we won't have the hassles that we have. That when we get in our work, that we won't complain about the boss that, that's making us work hard. Yeah. Anything that we might be able to, to live lives that are pure and holy and crazy for God. Because God, as this thing says right here, that we're armed and dangerous. Are we being dangerous? To the enemy, or are we just being now and letting the enemy talk to us and say, man, you guys are the, the, the army of Saul, you guys are a bunch of men. We have to be armed, knowing that, that we're, we're dangerous, a threat to the enemy, that we could be a David. And right now, I'd like to do something different. It's not like where we have our heads bowed and our eyes closed, but with every eye open and everyone looking, that if you want to be like a David, that, to stand up, that we can pray for you. That, that you would say, that, hey, I want to be different. That man, I know that God has given me an army to, to go out and fight the battles. And I have a vision. I want to get that vision. God, help me to get a vision of that victory. God, let me know the inheritance that you have already given to me. Let me know more about that. And ask God, give me a deep, deep desire to serve you and follow you in everything that I do. If, if you 
like that, be it David, one of those that has all those qualities that we might not be fully on, but it's that desire that, that, that God looks on, the heart. That nobody else would say, oh, well, you're not trying hard enough, but it's the desire of saying, God, I want to serve you in everything that I do. And God is doing great things. If you would like to, stand up, don't be afraid. These people that are dating. Thank you, Father, because you are, you are the one that gives us a strength. 
You're the one that gives us the courage, the confidence, and the boldness to, to take the man that you have already given to us. That any problem that we might be facing right now, that you have overcome it. And we have that assurance that you are our victory. And I thank you, God, for this morning because you are going to do great things in the hearts and lives of everyone here. I pray that you go with them and you minister as we even think that the enemy is going to come around again. And we say that we made a commitment to you, God. May that be a, a burden on our heart that we remember the commitment that we have made. That commitments aren't just things to be laughed aside, or, but they are commitments unto you. And you look at us and you take those commitments seriously. You like to put hearts 